let's pick. Do you want to look at the wall first, no, or do you? Oh, are you the wall. <laughs> How does it read? <laughs> no, it reads that we're more or less on track uh, to do what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, we wanted to increase our vote uh, nationally. Mm -hmm. It looks like we're going to do that. Uh, we wanted to retain control of the Western Cape. I think we're going to retain control of the Western Cape by quite a significant majority. Uh -huh. And uh, we wanted to drive the ANC to beneath 50% in Kaateng. All right. James, will look at the wall. I'll look at the wall. It reads that the DA has broken through the million vote mark. You are only the second party behind the ruling African National Congress. But of course, the wall tells us other things. It tells us that smaller parties have been eating your lunch, namely the good party and the Freedom Front Plus. Well, I don't think really the good party, because if you look at the wall, it's really fairly static. But certainly the Freedom Front Plus, yes. And to some extent, the ACDP. Mm. Uh, and you know what happened there? Do you know what happened? Especially the 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 last, if you will, the last bit of momentum from the ACDP with regards to the Western Cape. What spurred it on? I mean, what happened there? Well, um, they they engaged in uh, quite clever marketing, uh, using the Facebook groups of charismatic churches and other groups like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they were able to talk to an audience that uh, was quite frankly not available to us. Mm. So um, particularly in lower middle class uh, colored areas, they were able to be very effective. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know what we lost on the one side, we must have gained on the other side. Where did the gains come from? Well, the gains pr principally came from black voters. Mm. So we have polled far more black voters than in any other previous mm. election. And that pleases us very much. You speak about the fact that some constituencies were not available to the DA to reach. Is that the religious barrier that got the ACDP over no. that? And are you worried about the religious factor into this? I mean, no, when no. you combine the ACDP together with ATM, you really have some bubbling, if you will, sure. of religious Look, overtones. I, I think what's going on in South Africa at the moment, and I think it's a society under strain, mm. is that people are retreating back into uh, territory that they're familiar with mm -hmm. and comfortable with. So if you look at the religious vote, that is one comfort zone. Mm. If you look at uh, uh, Afrikaner nationalists, mm -hmm. that's another comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, if you join the DA, you're a party for all South Africans. We're not a party for Christians or Muslims. Or we're Is a that a tougher sell, though, James? Yes. Especially in a country as fragmented as South Africa. Is that a tougher sell today than it's ever been? Absolutely correct. But it's a sell that we must make. Because we are one country with one future. Mm. And uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure that there is a party in South Africa that everybody who believes in South Africa and mm. its people can vote for. All right, James, let's just change tack for a bit. You are the official opposition. By definition, we expect more complaints and objections from the leader of the opposition, which is the DA. It's your responsibility. But also, what do you make of these elections, especially when you consider alleged voter fraud, possible irregularities which happen with every election, regardless of where, and also the fact that we could have had external forces trying to influence our elections, namely the Russians. Yeah. Are they trying to influence our elections? Do you have suggestion of such acts? Well, we certainly have documentation to that effect. It was given to us by a very reliable source. Mm -hmm. And it does seem to suggest that the same people that were responsible for meddling in the United States election tried to meddle in ours. Um, we don't know the extent of that meddling. We don't know the extent to which the ANC used the services. Uh -huh. But we certainly show, there is evidence that showed that they wished to discredit us and the EFF. But how? How did they well, meddle in this election? Well, the, it was chiefly through propaganda against us by using stories uh, that painted us in a, in a bad light. Uh -huh. Uh, and amplifying those through social media. The ruling party is going to accuse you of the same? Yes, but except we don't have Mr. Putin's right-hand man on our payroll. Mm -hmm. um, I have to act as the devil's advocate here. Why would the Russians spend money and effort trying to influence the elections that all pollsters said the African National Congress was going to win? 
Yes, um, but uh, at a particular point, uh, according to their research, mm -hmm. Uh, the ANC was in a lot of trouble and uh, sitting on about 55% of the support. Um, and I think they felt the, uh, a duty to d discredit what the document describes as a pro-Western DA party. That's very interesting. Now let's look at what we can do with those complaints and objections. You've leveled them to the IEC. Where are we? What is happening with regards to those complaints and objections that the DA Look, we lodged about 2,500 complaints countrywide, mm -hmm. um, and uh, most of them were of a technical nature. Uh, the booths didn't open on time, the machinery was defective, the lack of equipment, or whatever the case might be. Mm -hmm. But there were two particular things that were particularly worrisome. The one was that ballot papers ran out mm -hmm. in many polling stations mm -hmm. embarrassingly early in the morning. So at by 10 o'clock in the morning, some voting stations had no ballot papers. Now, that's unex unacceptable and inexcusable. Mm -hmm. the, but far more worrying than that is persuasive evidence that we have that people were able to vote more than one time. And uh, so much so that uh, we have documentary evidence and we have one of our mm. own members was but able to go and vote twice or attempt to vote twice. I can only try and reiterate some of the, the assertions made by the Chief Electoral Officer here, Mr. Simon Mabolo, that we can't take sporadic incidents and take them as a norm. No. How widespread are we talking here, especially in terms of people being able to vote twice? I, I simply don't know at this stage. Mm. But what's problematic about them is the process because mm -hmm. the process wasn't foolproof mm. and it still is not well it should be yeah in other words if you um come to a voting station mm. you should either be scratched off on the voters roll mm -hmm. or fill in a vec4 form mm -hmm. voting stations ran out of vec forms mid-morning so they allowed people through without filling in a form or they allowed people through just writing their names down on a pad. Now, that becomes or makes it possible for people to vote more than once. And so what we want is we want the IEC to conduct some sort of reconciliation and audit f to establish how far f uh, extensive this is. And it's all very well for Mr. Mama Baller to say that, you know, it was isolated. How does he know it was isolated? Mm. But it, he seems to be saying that the problems do exist. So he is acknowledging that the fact that the system is not perfect. But what he's saying is that these are not as widespread as some have How suggested. How does he know? How does he know? Well, I assume he's doing his investigations, he's the IEC, he's picking up things on the ground, there's an issue tracker right there or with the, you know, where we are on the ground. So I'm imagining that he's getting some sort of analysis and investigations into some of these. Well, uh, our analysis and our investigation shows that prima facie, mm -hmm. there are literally, there's a possibility of thousands of people having voted twice. What do you suggest some of what happens to those votes that have been affected by irregularity slash allegations of fraud. What happens to the quarantine? What, what do the political parties, the 48 that are gathered in this uh, election, how do you decide what happens to those votes? Well, um, in the end, it's an electoral court decision that would have to be taken mm -hmm. about how to deal with them. But mm -hmm. uh, I mean, my own view would be that um, if somebody has co uh, committed electoral mm -hmm. fraud, that person should be criminally prosecuted mm. and his or her votes, vote or votes should be dis dis mm. disregarded. Regardless of what has happened, all the allegations, investigation, possible court action, <laughs> post these results, we are here now. Sure. The DA is very much under pressure, as is the African National Congress, as is the EFF, as is every single party that looks at progress north of anything. You won more votes than you had the last time. Is the DA going to get 23%? Because that would be a plus one on 2014. Um, a lot will depend on how many people split their vote. Because mm -hmm. we have a phenomenon in this election in respect to the DA mm -hmm. 
where for a variety of reasons uh, people split their ballots. They voted DA on the province mm -hmm. and they voted <laughs> either ANC or, e or Freedom Front Plus on the national. You see through us. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it's very difficult for me to predict. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we'll get less than we got in the last election, mm -hmm. but how much we will grow depends on how many split ballots. Are. I worry about that because you say that confidently that you don't know if we're going to get less mm -hmm. than what you did. I'm inclined to ask you, what happens if you do? What does that mean for Musi Maimani? What does that mean for the DA? A party that has grown every single election since 1994 when it was still before the DA, when it was still the Democratic Party. What happens if you reach a blip, you plateau, and you fail to grow past your last elections? Well, I don't know. That will depend on uh, our party and what our party decides on the matter. Uh, I think we ran a campaign that was as good as it possibly could get. Uh, there were some environmental factors that affected our election campaign. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether Musi Maimani could have done any more than he did. He led mm. from the front, he was out there, he was campaigning the length and breadth of this country. Mm. And if the environmental factors made it impossible for us to grow, then it was certainly wasn't his fault. I'm going to steal a minute, um, and the studio will not forgive me. But ultimately, I believe that the fight will be around the contestation of provinces. You, as the Democratic Alliances, as the Democratic Alliance, rather, have, have said that the Northern Cape is up for grabs, uh, and that would be from the ruling African National Congress. They've said the same about the province you govern, the Western Cape, that that is up for grabs. What do you see in that fight? How do you see the DA emerging in that fight? Are you going to touch the two prov province mark? Are you going to take the Northern Cape, and based on what? Um, it looks unlikely that we will take the Northern Cape, mm -hmm. but it does look possible that the ANC will be held beneath 20, uh, beneath 50 percent of the mm. vote in Gauteng. Mm. Now, if that is the case, then obviously whichever government is formed in Gauteng has to be a minority government or a coalition government. Mm. And that gives us an opportunity to spend some time this afternoon mm. talking to the other political parties. <laughs> I see you <laughs> shaking hands. <laughs> James, I could talk to you all day, especially when it comes to opposition. And maybe that's a conversation we can have a little bit later 